a case in which bilateral vertebral artery mobilization during operative reduction of basilar invagination was performed using Goel's technique. The patient is a 56-year-old woman with rheumatoid arthritis who presented to clinic with upper extremity numbness, shocking neck pain with movement, and progressive upper extremity weakness. Her cervical MRI demonstrated severe cervical medullary junction compression and basilar invagination as seen here on axial and sagittal T2 sequences. A subsequent CTA of the neck demonstrated severe chronic atlantoaxial subluxation with worrisome displacement of the vertebral arteries bilaterally. On examination, the patient was pathologically hyperreflexic and had profound myelopathy. A C1 C2 decompression with reduction in instrumentation using the GOEL technique was offered. Bilateral vertebral artery mobilization was planned prior to cervical manipulation. The patient was pinned at the superior temporal line above the pinna bilaterally. She was placed in prone position and her head was secured in a slight military flex position in order to facilitate exposure and screw placement. A standard midline incision was made from just below the ineon to below the C2 spinous process and the cranial cervical junction was exposed by a dissection through the median raffae. Here is an anatomic depiction of the V3 segment in relation to C1 and C2 from a midline perspective. From a more lateral perspective, the relationship of the ascending V3 segment between C1 and C2 is appreciated, as is its close relationship to the C1 and C2 nerve roots. After the initial midline exposure, the C1 arch is dissected laterally by a combination of blunt dissection and electrocautery. Medial aspects of the suboccipital musculature, such as the superior oblique muscle, may be dissected in order to provide a wider exposure. The superior margin of the C1 arch is identified, and the transverse process of the C1 is then defined. Next, exposure of the C2 lateral mass is performed in a similar manner to the C1 exposure, with frequent use of Doppler localization of the vertebral artery to avoid iatrogenic injury. The C1 nerve root is identified and sharply transected to allow for greater access to and mobilization of the looped V3 segment entering the transverse foramen, which is visualized during gentle blunt dissection. The C2 nerve root is similarly cauterized and transected in order to give access to the vertical segment of V3. This is a key step anytime the ascending segment of the vertebral artery must be localized, as well as being an important landmark for the identification of the C1 C2 joint. Preganglionic transection prevents neuropathic pain. The superior aspect of the lateral mass of C2 is dissected and the foramen transversarium is identified. A periosteal dissection of the bone adjacent to the vertebral artery is performed using a Penfield 1. Further dissection between the vertebral artery and the PLL is performed to identify the eroded joint space. The procedure is performed again on the right side with exposure of the C1 and C2 and dissection of the ascending vertebral artery and associated nerve roots. The anatomic relationship of the vertebral artery to C1 and C2 is demonstrated in this figure. Here, the hypermobility of the unstable C1-C2 joint is demonstrated bilaterally and the vertebral arteries are seen nicely isolated from the joint complex. Decompression via C1 laminectomy and instrumentation was then performed. C1 lateral mass screws were placed with 5 degrees of medial trajectory and bicortical purchase. At C2, bilateral pedicle screws were placed. At C3, lateral mass screws were placed due to poor bone quality. The C1 C2 joints were bilaterally decorticated. Titanium interfacet spacers with bone allograft were inserted at C1 C2, inducing distraction of the joints and some joint reduction. An assistant proceeded to untether the Mayfield clamp from the bed, and neutral alignment of the head over the cervical spine was achieved by a head extension. This configuration was locked into place with rods, which further contributed to joint reduction. Fluoroscopic imaging confirmed reduction as defined by the relationship of the C1 anterior tubercle with respect to the C2 vertebral body. 
A multi-layer fascial closure with dissolvable sutures followed by skin staples was performed. The patient remained at her neurological baseline and was ultimately discharged home. While not always necessary, vertebral artery mobilization is helpful in situations where manipulation of vertebral alignment may stress the vertebral arteries or where dissection of or drilling of deeper structures is impaired by their positioning. This may be magnified in situations where aberrant vessel location inhibits safe spinal instrumentation.